Now, when I think of Topps knives, I think of blades like the Prather War Buoy. American-made, large, thick, heavy-duty fixed blades with crazy profiles and capabilities. So when they recently released the Pocket Knife MSF-01, made in Italy out of Elemax steel and comes in at a weight of under four ounces, it's an obvious deviation from their normal MO. Now, something I've been thinking about is in 2023, we have become so accustomed to fast acting, quick action locking mechanisms. I mean, the crossbar style of lock has now become basically an industry standard across the board. In recent years, push button locks have also become very popular. The recent introduction of durable spine locks. So to choose a liner lock on a design like this in 2023 feels a little archaic. And that means that the materials and the design itself are really gonna have to carry the brunt of the scrutiny for you and me, the astute knife connoisseur, are looking for in a pocket knife. Now let me know your thoughts on liner locks in general. Do you still use them in rotation or have you gravitated to other locking mechanisms in 2023? So I've used this several times in my EDC rotation, really put it through its paces. We have two competitive options to look at that are in the liner lock arena as well. So we have an action-packed video for you guys today. I appreciate you coming over and hanging out with me today. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's begin with the business end of this blade. Now, MSF stands for Mini Scandi Folder. This does not have a Scandi grind. It has a three-fourths high flat grind, which is excellent. Now, the old version that this is based off of did have a Scandi grind. I reviewed that years ago. I believe it had N690 steel and micarta handle scales. I way prefer the higher flat grind with the LMAX because the flat grind just tends to be more versatile in my experience. Scandies are great for woodscraft, but I wouldn't use them for a lot of different tasks, and I way prefer this grind, and they did an excellent job with that buoy shape. I mean, just excellent. No swedging. So it's got a nice durable tip that pierces so well. Nice bit of belly there. And at 0 0.13, it's got a robust blade coming in at three and a quarter inches overall blade length. So the sizing I think is right there for general EDC. The blade shape I just totally connect with. And even that upper portion because the flat stops, you can use that for some good slicing, good uh, food prep. So this would be a good food prep knife. I enjoyed that. And then LMAX Steel, back when it was introduced, was kind of like the Magna Cut of its day. It, ha it has a lot of good balance points that you look for in a steel, in, a, in it's stainless. So it has good corrosion resistance, good toughness, and good wear resistance. And since we're talking about LMAX, I might as well bring up the price. The value is definitely there. For an Italian-made LMAX blade, this is one of the cheaper opportunities that you're going to be able to get that type of steel on this type of a pocket knife because this comes in at $150 on average. Now I'll have links in the description below this video to all the affiliate networks that I really partner with, but for some perspective, we're going to be running in a lot throughout this video for the competitive option point is this Italian made um, giant mouse Jutland also an LMAX, this is like $200. So, I mean, this is $50 more, liner lock, some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about today. You're gonna pay $50 more for an Italian-made LMAX blade. Uh, and these fluctuate all over the place between 100 and 150, but this is a Taiwanese made with XHP steel, CTS, XHP, yeah, <clears throat> steel, a great steel as well, more in the D2 family. Uh, a little bit larger, and we're going to be running this in as well. And this will be, like I said, 100 to 150 bucks. Just it depends on like who, what, when, where, why, handle, you know, colors, that type of stuff. So there is a lot to say about the value, and I do appreciate Tops hooking me up with this, so I can point out the pros and definitely some of the cons I'm seeing in this design as we're breaking it down. Now, how does this deploy in its lockup? You know, the deployment is like hitting the gas and its acceleration from zero to 60 that you experience in a car. How it shifts, how it gets up to that speed will determine how enjoyable it is for you to deploy and use your folder. Now, in this case, we have a giant, huge flipper. Now, I'm not unopposed to flippers. I own many. If you were to ask me in rating my preference, I prefer thumb studs first, slits and holes of some kind second, and flippers third, but they're ambidextrous. This one protrudes very nicely, so you can easily hit it with leather gloves on, and it definitely protrudes for a good lockup. It does kind of, I'll be honest, throw off the symmetry of the knife a little bit. You know, you look at this one, here's the flipper on that Jutland, and it's encapsulated by the scale more and just looks more organic. This one kind of like, whoa, there's a flipper there. 
I mean, it helps with uh, displaying it, I guess, and locking it into place. So flows open well on ball bearings from my understanding. The original model had ball bearings. I'm not seeing data anywhere and I can't see washers in there. Uh, and I can't actually see the ball bearings either. It's encapsulated, but it feels like ball bearings from what I can tell. And so what that means is you're gonna get a smooth action. So even without flipping, flicking my wrist, I can get it to deploy. And then it's got a smooth drop in right there. Excellent detent. I mean, it's not gonna open on you and that tip is buried in there. You are not gonna accidentally get it. I can't even get it with my fingernail. I wanna go like that. So those aspects to it are done really well. So if you're enjoying this type of content, I invite you to hit that like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I invite you to consider subscribing, becoming part of the Gideon's Tactical crew here, making sure to hit that bell icon so that you can be notified every week when I put up new gear and equipment videos, breaking them down for us to help us better stay equipped and prepared for whatever life throws our way. And we do have that stop bar right there. I'd say it's average, it's not ultra built, overbuilt. I mean, the Astor right there is thicker and it's about the same thickness as on the Jutland. So since this one's Italian made, they may even be made in the same factory for all I know. Um, that's pretty, you know, standard, nothing to write home about there. Flips open. Then you got that liner lock right there that hits the back spine very nicely. Unlike some ball bearings that are kind of loosey goosey and you're feeling it kind of rock side to side, that is not the case on this. And then it's zero play up and down, which is exactly what you want. Now, this is when we start talking about some aspects that I'm like, mm, this is the first one and it's the way the liner lock jimping is. Now it matches the spine jimping and Tops is known for pretty aggressive jimping. And so it, it feels pretty sharp. It gives you a rough ride closing it when you are doing that, like you're putting pressure to, you know, scoot the, the lock to the side to close the blade on you and it, it you feel it. Now with leather gloves on, that'd be great. It, it's just, if you're to ask me ergonomically, the Astor has a chamfered line right there. Very easy for me to disengage. You can do it with gloves. That or like light shallow jimping like that would have been preferred. Now the benefit, thank goodness, is that on this side, the scale is flush. They don't really protrude. So that's why I was checking right away is like indexing when I first got it do I feel the jimping? And I do not. In a right-handed grip or a left-handed grip, you don't feel the jimping on the lock. It's just when you are disengaging it. It's not the end of the world, but it's just like abrupt, sharp. It doesn't need to be for a folder. And I would have preferred the other two options I just showed to you to do that aspect. Now we gotta address the ergonomics of this knife and how it feels in the hand. But before we do that, I wanna take a brief moment to give a shout out to one of our regular sponsors here at the channel, which is LA Police Gear. Now I've been so glad to have LA Police Gear as a regular sponsor here at the channel for going on two years. And I'm glad to regularly partner with them because of the massive variety of really well-established gear that myself and many of you use on a daily basis. Giving you and me, the user, reliable gear to choose from, regardless if it's a day at the range, our everyday carry systems that we're updating, or days in the backcountry on outdoor adventures. But LA Police Gear's own brand of gear and equipment also really excels, and I wanna highlight specifically the Terrain Stealth series of packs that I've recently tested out two of them and been very impressed with because you're getting a lot of capability for a budget-friendly price point, and it's hard to find all of the features as well as materials in models at this price point. You usually have to sacrifice many of those other key features or materials, but LA Police Gear is able to accomplish both and give us a really well-balanced messenger bag, sling bag, and backpack. So guys, I'll have a link in the description below this video over to the LA Police Gear website, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code that you can apply site-wide towards your purchase. Now, when it comes to the comfort level in your hand, what we have are G10 handle scales, black or green currently, that are available. You're gonna get this nice texturing. I really like it. It's not medium, but it's not light. It's got a really good just kind of ribbing to it on those G10 handle scales. The shoulders have all been milled, they're flat, it's gonna be 0.55 on the thickness, and it's gonna be 4.38 overall length, and then 3.8 ounces. So slim in the pocket, light in the hand, flow through construction, milling on those stainless steel liners in there. So they've really done a good job. Here are the two ergonomic issues that I have. First off, again, is just the aggressive jimping. It's not necessary on this type of knife, and just because of how abrupt it is, 
when you look at it in comparison to blocky jimping like on the Astor or this really fine jimping on the Jutland. I mean, that's way more my preference. Now, if you really like hot, heavy jimping, great, fine. That's awesome. This is gonna have that. Uh, thankfully, there's enough of a flat spot that if I do do that, I can kind of scoot past and almost completely mitigate the jimping altogether. But I mean, if I naturally, I would wanna put it right there. And you, if you're doing hard push cuts right now as I'm pressing, I'm feeling it and I wouldn't wanna do this for five minutes. Not that you do that that often on the pocket knife, but just you know something to be aware of. The one that's almost more of an issue for me, even than that, is this pocket clip. Now, it's ambidextrous, it's thin, uh, you got the screw on the back, it's got shoulders on the other side so it doesn't play or move, that's great. Unscrew it, flip it with the flipper, liner lock, you know, it's definitely an ambidextrous blade, so that's excellent. It's thin and flexy. That protruding tip is huge. I mean, in comparison to our other two options, it, they are not as crazy as that. And what actually ends up happening is there's not much of a gap right here versus, again, the Astor is you're gonna get a much higher gap even though those bolts are exposed on that one. And same here. So what, this is what ends up happening. For your, like your slacks, this will be fine outside of the flare. And that flare has caught uh, counter edges already. One time it pulled it out of my pocket completely. The other time it kind of damaged the you know, countertop a little bit. It needs to be replaced anyway, but not ideal. This would be like a car scratching magnet. So be aware of that. Now it's thin enough that you can kind of flex it down and kind of help with the, not only snagging onto stuff, grabbing things and scratching stuff, but just ergonomically, it, it goes right in the palm of my hand. And when you bear down on it, it, it's all over the place. It's right there, you feel it, it's just not ideal. So you can bend it down. The, the issue is that this little loop right here is not high enough. So if you have reinforced pants like Carhartt's, work pants, 511 tactical pants, it'll actually like try and flare that pocket clip out even more so. So it should have had a higher rise, lower lip, much more like that and it would have been not only more ergonomic in your hand, but then less snaggy onto stuff. So it's really hard for me, guys. On the one hand, Topps is doing an excellent job giving us value for the materials. The LMAX, Italian made, good fit and finish on the design means that even in 2023, you can get your hands on high quality European or American made tools and not have to go over $200, which is basically what you're gonna have to do with the Jutland for the exact same steel made in the exact same area, potentially even the same factory. The difference is like on the Jutland, there isn't a hot spot anywhere on this and it's more ergonomic for me to use carry and I have to do nothing to it. If I was going to use this every day as an EDC, I would have to do something to try and modify and mess around with the pocket clip and I would be taking the jimping portions and trying to take a Dremel or some sort of sandpaper just to dial that back some to make it more comfortable in the hand. So it'll obviously be up to you to determine for yourself is the value with the rest of the design characteristics worth throwing in rotation or not. I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and comments below. I appreciate you taking your time today and popping over. Check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. And I'll see you out there.